Okay, today we're going to try to show you what we mean by the retrograde motion of Mars. So Mars is a planet, and a planet means a wandering star in the ancient, ancient tradition. Uh, not just things that look very far away. So actually, let's look at what Mars's motion looks like in the sky. So what I've done is I've started up Stellarium, and Stellarium is showing us Mars moving, uh, moving across the sky. Now, if you look at the bottom, you'll see that the time is progressing very rapidly. Um, it's going at many days per second. So if we wanted to slow this down to real time, we would be seeing Mars not move at all. I've also taken the liberty of turning off the ground, and I've turned off the horizon, and I'm looking at it as though we're somehow orbiting Earth, orbiting Earth from space, and just simply looking out at Mars. So that's kind of what it looks like in summary, but let's actually build this image. So first of all, I'm going to slow it down. I'll go to today, turn on the horizon, turn on the atmosphere, turn on the atmosphere, turn on the ground, and give us a perspective like you normally see. So when we look at Mars, we try to find Mars, we're looking for a little dot in the sky. And so let's go, we're at like this field or something like that. Let's go forward in time. And uh, what we'll try to do is just say, okay, let's go, set, this says 9 p.m. Oops, don't want to do that. 9 p.m., uh, 7 p.m. That's uh, tonight, August 13th at 7 p.m. Now we're at about 8.30 p.m. And there we see roughly about 9.30 p.m. There's Mars in the sky. So if we were to look for Mars in the sky, we look for a little dot. Uh, Saturn uh, precipitously is right next to it, and the moon is up. So, and Antares, a bright star, is really close by as well. So you could actually look and find these things. It's not, they're not difficult to find in the sky. It's you know, setting in the west, and you've got to have a clear sky. But other than that, you're doing OK. So let's actually look what it looks like for to go day by day. So tomorrow night, it'll be there. The next night, it'll be there. And next night it'll be there. These are all 9.30 p.m. times. And I'm just tabbing through day after day after day. And you'll notice two pieces of motion with respect to Mars. First, I'm going literally 24 hours at a time. Let me stop this so it doesn't continue. We're at, uh, at, at 9.27.31 p.m. And if I go forward in time another day, we'll see that the stars are shifting position. All the stars are. All the stars are moving towards the west, towards the west in the sky. Well, actually, there's the south over there, but it's just southwest because everything's trying to set. So the stars are moving from east to west as the night progresses. But notice how Mars is also not staying fixed with respect to those background stars. It keeps moving a little bit along. And as soon as we get into September, Mars will be so low in the sky that it'll be almost impossible to find in the evening. But you can give it your best shot. Anyway, so let's go back to uh, let's go back a few days. Let's go reverse time a little bit, all the way back to August 13th. So there's August 13th, which is the time I'm filming. I'm talking about this August 13, 2016. So what's going on? First, let's actually isolate the stars' motions themselves. The stars provide a fixed background that you can look at. And let's say we present, we can make a map out of that fixed background by doing the following. We can turn on a grid, make a grid for them. Now you'll notice that all the stars are fixed with respect to this grid. Well, to just to show you that, let's do the same exercise again. I'm going forward day by day by day. And you'll notice the grid stays fixed with respect to the stars. And Mars does not stay fixed with respect to that grid. It is not a distant star. It is a nearby object. So the stars themselves appear to be connected, or at least fixed with respect to this background grid. And that grid we call uh, the equatorial coordinate system. And it's a special coordinate system that's based on the north and south pole of the Earth and where the axis of rotation of the Earth is pointed. And it is fixed with respect to particular stars. So if it's above or below the celestial horizon, which is the projection of the Earth's equator out into space, then it is at zero degrees declination. You see the zero degree mark going across here, and you see the vertical looking bands, which are extensions of, of latitude and longitude extended out into the sky there. So we can just think of it as an Earth-based projection system uh, sent out into the sky. But you notice it rotates every 24 hours. And keep, well, every 24 hours it seems to shift a little bit. 
So what's going on there? So let's actually decipher that. Let's go back to August 13th as we have. Here we have it. So there's August 13th at about 9.30 p.m. Now instead of shifting by exactly 24 hours, let's shift instead by the time it takes for the, for the stars to move back to their original position. Notice that the date across the bottom is moving. It certainly is moving. And it's going 31st, not September 1st. But Mars appears to be moving, and now we're kind of catching up to sunset. What does that mean? Well, that means, oh, look at the time now, 17.45 or 9, 7 p.m., 7.45 p.m. at night. So the stars, if we want to abide by keeping the stars fixed, then we notice that the moon, that, that, everything, that everything nearby moves with respect to the stars. Now let's keep this process going a little bit. We'll keep going, and we'll see that as we go, we're getting earlier and earlier and earlier. So the stars set Every, so there's the sun coming. So we're kind of going forward in time, but it looks like the sun's kind of rising up. That's not the case. The case is now it's 2 in the afternoon. So what is the case here? The day that we know from sunrise to sunset or noon to noon is 24 hours. But it takes the stars 7 minutes less time, 4 minutes less, uh, not 7, 4 minutes less time to make their trip around the sun. So if we go back one, one more day, we'll see that, there it is, go back and forth between those two days. We see that it's about four minutes difference between the, where the sun is now and 24 hours. So I'm going back and forth between those sidereal days. So there's a solar day, which means noon to noon, and a sidereal day. And sidereal means star. So the day with respect to the stars. So the grid stays fixed if we do go with, with respect to the stars, and if we and, uh, and let's see what happens, and if the sun sets, or the time goes forward if we go back the other way. So let's actually go forward in time now on that date to 9.30 p.m. So let's actually speed up time a little bit so we can get down to 9.30. So there it is, about 9.38, that's good enough. So where's Mars? Well, Mars has followed the sun around and has set. Well, this makes it kind of annoying because we want to see the motion of Mars, and we want to not, not pretend all that we can do that. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to do a magic thing and turn off the ground. Then what I'm going to do is turn off the horizon. Then what I'm going to do is turn off where north and south are. Uh, that's, the, that's these cardinal points. And now I'm going to turn, see kind of the grid kind of looks distorted. That's because it's taking into account the effect of the Earth's atmosphere when uh, you're looking towards the horizon. So I'm going to turn that effect off. So now we don't have any atmospheric effect. And then we see Mars sitting over here. So let's center on Mars and keep playing the game. So I'm going to go forward in time a day. Oh, Lord, look at that. Look what's happening is that Mars, as I go forward in time a day, kind of seems to rock back in actually one hour at a time. So as I go hour by hour, the, the grid of the stars appears to shift. And that's because as the stars rise and set, as we follow a particular set of stars, the, the direction that we're looking in the sky changes. So now I'm going to get off the Earth, get away from the Earth, and I'm going to uh, take into account that change. So now I'm going to look only at the fixed stars. I'm only going to see with respect to the background fixed stars like we're floating in space. And all we're doing is looking out into space from somewhere above the Earth that we don't have, we don't have to worry about looking through the Earth. It's kind of like having a Hubble Space Telescope view, not an International Space Station because the Earth is always viewed to them. But let's go way out into space and let's keep time going by 24 hours of a shot. So now if we go 24 hours, we see the grid slides by and that's because 24 hours, we still are taking that sidereal range of accounts. We're actually still somewhat orbiting the Earth, but very far away so we don't have to worry about it. But you'll notice that Mars is kind of creaking along as we go day by day by day by day to the left. That means it's moving towards the west. As it moves, uh, moving towards the east, it's got an easterly general motion. So as we look at the easterly general motion, we've got Mars going like this. But we're going to see something funny. Here comes the sun creeping up on it. Now I'm going to turn on. I'm going to accelerate time a little bit. I'm going to speed up time. So now you'll see that time will simply go faster. 
We're not going to just creak along by one day at a time or one hour at a time. We're not going to worry about sidereal time. We're just going to speed up time. So now we're at about uh, 10 minutes a second, now about two hours a second, now about almost a day a second, and now we're doing approximately two or three days a second. So let's actually watch what Mars does. So as we look at Mars's position with respect to everything, we see that it has this, let's call it leftward motion in general, with respect to the background stars. So the grid is fixed to the stars, and the stars are so distant that we see them not to move. But Mars moves respect to those background stars, and it seems to move leftward across the sky. And there it goes. We will see Jupiter and Saturn flying in around. And then Mars starts to slow down and then change direction. And then, wow, it's going the other way for some bizarre reason. And now it's coming back the way it was going. That loop, when it was going the other way, the current way is called prograde motion. When it's going from right to left with respect to the background stars, not when it's going left to right with respect to the background stars, they call that retrograde. So let's actually look at that. I'm going to turn on a trail. Let's watch Mars trail in orbit. So we're going to trace where it has been in the sky. You can see there it's been, in, we're not worried about the position of Venus and Mercury and Mars. Those are interesting too. We're going to watch Mars's position with respect to the background stars. That's what that trail of yellow is. So as Mars progresses on its prograde motion, all of a sudden it gets far enough away. The, the, the sun is on the opposite side of the sky. The sun's not in the sky. It doesn't matter where the moon is, the moon's zipping around. But all of a sudden we'll see that the slow, the gradual slowing down of Mars and there it begins the retrograde loop. It goes back in retrograde, and then it all of a sudden ends the retrograde motion and starts to go prograde. That loop caused astronomers huge difficulties for centuries. And we're not talking small difficulties, enormous difficulties. Understanding that loop and how it worked was the core issue for all of astronomy for thousands of years, starting with Ptolemy, all the way through Tycho Brahe, all the way through Kepler, through Copernicus, and everybody. Explaining that loop was an enormous difficulty. And that led us to geocentric models of the universe and, and where everything is. So let's actually watch that happen one more time. And just for interesting purposes, Let's actually tie, we'll, we'll just leave this for now. So we'll watch Mars do another retrograde motion. Here comes the star Aldebaran in the constellation Taurus. And we all we see some other stars floating around. Ah, here it comes. There's the retrograde motion. Sometimes it has a jaggly path. And this time we're going to see a really interesting uh, loopy pattern. There it goes. There's another jaggly pattern just like that. So that retrograde motion in the sky is a result, now we understand, of the Earth lapping Mars. So the Earth is going between Mars and the Sun, and it's going faster than the Earth, than Mars is going around the Sun. Now, the Sun doesn't seem to, it doesn't really care. We're looking in the same direction as the Sun. So here we go. Uh, so let's turn on the orbit of Mars now, which is a red line. The red line of Mars is the actual path of the orbit of Mars in, uh, with respect to the Sun. So notice how they diverge. The yellow line is the path of Mars with respect to the stars, and the orbit is the path with respect to the Sun. And you notice that that orbital path changes. That's because the Earth's position in the sky, the Earth and Mars, do not share a plane in the orbit. So the Mars's orbit is tilted with respect to Earth's orbit. So we can see there's the tilt. It's staying on that flat plane. It's flat plane. So Mars is riding a flat plane. That was a beautiful loop, well, retrograde loop. But its flat plane is with respect to the sun. And the view that we see is a result of two things. The view we see is that we're on Earth. We're on our own plane around the sun with its own inclination. And we're going faster than Mars is around the sun because we're closer. 
And so the two different tilts mean that we're not right in the same place. And so the two or the yellow view, what we see Mars do, and what Mars is actually doing with respect to the sun differ. So the red line is basically what the sun would see if it was looking at Mars. The yellow line is what we see it looking, we see it doing in the sky. But the red line is what if you were standing on the sun, you would see it moving. I could probably change our, our center of location so that we're on the sun. It would just be boring and just ride that red line. So it's the conf it's the convergence of two things, the view from the sun and the view as we go around the sun and Mars's path as it goes around the sun. As those two motions add up, we get that retrograde loop. So that is one of the, one of the largest issues of all of antiquity and antiquated astronomy. And explaining that loop was a big, 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 big step towards the accomplishment of Copernicus, of Kepler, of Bra, of Galileo, and a number of people. So to, to explain this with Earth at the center is very complicated, but to put the Sun at the center makes it a lot easier.